let's debrief on the API challenge post challenger 21. And you can find the API challenges app at eviltester.com slash API challenges. And there'll be links to a cloud hosted version, some tutorial videos, these videos here, how to download, how to run it. So everything you need to know is on the eviltester.com slash API challenges page. Now I ran the application locally. You could do exactly the same thing on the cloud instance and you most likely want to do this on the cloud instance because this challenge is how we create a session to track our challenges when we're testing on the cloud instance. So we had to issue a post request. And this is not the challenge I would normally start on because normally when I'm explaining APIs, I explain get requests first. And first of all, I generally explain how HTTP works, how browsers work, how they issue get requests to the server. But one of the things that I found interesting about this challenge is that it demonstrates that APIs are not always the most intuitive way of using an application. Right? A browser, a desktop, a GUI, a graphical user interface is the most intuitive way of using an application. APIs are not. APIs are the application programming interface. They're designed to be following the documentation a little bit more obscure. You have to understand things, but they don't change. Like the aim of an API is that once you do understand it, once you have automated it, the contract between your program and the system doesn't change very much. So you don't really have to do much more than once you've implemented it. This was interesting in that it demonstrates that we have to learn a whole bunch of stuff in order to use it. So when you first do this challenge, there'll be a lot you don't understand. You just have to take for granted that in order for me to track my challenge status, I have to issue a post request to the challenger. I may not even know what that means. This may be the first time that I'm using a tool like Insomnia to do anything. I don't understand what's going on and that's okay. Right, that's pretty much how it works with APIs. We read the documentation, we experiment, we make requests. We have to get in the habit of doing that and not being scared that we're going to break something. Analyzing the responses coming back, make sure we understand them because every API has nuances. So we then have to use a post request. We could have done this through Curl, we could have done this through Postman, we could have done this through Paul, we could have done this on any API client. Um, I use Insomnia um, simply because it's easy to demonstrate and easy to see the requests that were made. So what does this do? Why is this a post request? So if I was describing this API call to a person, I might say, I need the system to give me a, an X challenger code so that I can track my challenge status. Or I might say, I need to get an X challenger code to track my challenges. Now, HTTP has verbs like get. So maybe I should have issued a get request to this challenger endpoint. I'd say get me a challenger value. And since it's coming back in the response, that might make sense. But the reason we don't issue a get request is that a get request is not supposed to change the server. A get request is supposed to simply retrieve data. There's not supposed to be any side effects of creating information. A GET request should not return a 201 status code, which we can see up here. A 201 status code is the created status code. It means something has happened on the server. So we use a POST request to make changes on the server. That's our basic way of creating and amending things. A GET request would be or should be cacheable, should make no changes on the back end. So this status code 201. One of the interesting things about status codes is we need to get in the habit of looking at the documentation. So just type into your search engine 201 HTTP status code. Chances are a link to HTTP statuses will come back and that will explain the status code. And there's usually a link. The reason I like httpstatuses.com is there's a link to the official documentation. And it's very important that we do read the official documentation at least once because there's nuances in there. And when we're discussing, is this API working? Is it not? How should I design this API? The official documentation is where we're going to take most of our guidance from. Now we can make decisions when we're making APIs to not use the official guidance, but the more we use the official guidance, the more um, intuitive our API becomes and the easier it is to pick up and for people to automate. 
So we received a 201 status code. In the challenge, um, it, it says we should be creating a new challenge or session, which is implied by the 201 status code. So what other status codes could be provided? Well, we don't know. So we might, if we were testing this, want to experiment and issue a GET request. Does a GET request work? Um, if the verb isn't supported, we should expect to see a 405 status code come back, a method not allowed status code. The API should be using status codes appropriately. It should interpret the verbs appropriately. This is how we, this is a lot of the time what we argue about um, when we're testing APIs and trying to make sure they're as standard as they can be. So what is important in the response? Well, the important thing in the response here is the status code. Did it work or not? 201. The X challenger header, which has the value that we're going to use in future requests, again in an X challenger header so we can track the requests, and the location header. The X challenger header is a custom header. Now, applications are free to create custom headers. They have to be careful in how they name them in case it clashes with a standard name. Now, in it used to be the recommended practice to do what we're doing here, which is to prefix the header with an X. So X challenger means it's a custom header. And that's now a deprecated standard, but it can still be used. And a lot of APIs still use X challenger or X as a prefix to say this is a custom header. So when you see that in the um, API, usually that's a custom header. The location header is a standard header. If we looked at the documentation for the location header, it will tell us that we'd expect to see a location header when it's a, a 300, a redirection code, or a 201. This is a 201. Now, the location header is normally used in browsers so that when we make a request, the location header tells the browser, you've, you've just done an action, you've just posted some data. Now, redirect to this page and see that data. So here, the location header is telling us we could go to GUI slash challenges and see the result. And that's what happens. We go off to the GUI slash challenges URL and we'll see the status of the challenges. If I was doing this on the cloud system, it would show slash GUI slash challenges, then slash the actual value that's in here in the X challenger, because that's how I would see the session data on the cloud client. Here, I don't do that. So the API is smart enough to give us the right location header for the data that we're looking at. And that's important. When we see location headers, we should check that they actually go to the right place, that they're redirecting us to the information that we should be seeing. Because headers are really important. It's way too easy to um, ignore the headers. In the first version of um, the API Challenger, the X Challenger header was in here twice. Now, that's not such a big deal when it's being sent back to the client. But one of the things we have to get in the habit of doing is duplicating headers when we send them through to the um, server, potentially with different data in it to make sure that all the headers are validated because it can be a security risk that only the first occurrence of the header in the request is validated and allows invalid data to slip through the validation process. So always get in the habit of reading the headers, make sure you understand what they mean, make sure that you get into it, look up everything that you don't understand in the official documentation. Now in Insomnia, it can show us the requests that it sent through. So we can see that when we posted this challenger request, it used a user agent of Insomnia. So it's saying I'm coming from this Insomnia client. That's probably not important. Um, but we have to be aware that if we were using this to make requests on a website, it might be expecting a user agent for the browser. So we might have to change that. And you can see the full response that came back here with the status code 201. So we'll look at the headers and what makes up a, a request and the different parts here in more detail in different challenges, because this challenge was really not even supposed to exist. But when I was putting it into the cloud, I needed a way to associate uh, sessions so that people could revisit them. This isn't really a form of authorization or authentication, although it might seem like that because we're um, essentially 
being authenticated to access a particular status. But as long as you know the status ID, you can get in. So it's really just a way of associating your session with this uh, code. So we have to cover authentication and authorization in more detail later on. But that's just a quick overview of what we've seen in there. And the most important things are the X Challenger header, the location and the status code 201. So do look those up in the standards, get in the habit of doing your own research on this to see how it works. And now, so it's now time to experiment and as we go through more of the challenges, then we'll learn more about API testing and this will become natural for us. And um, can your API issue different results and skip that bit? The API documentation for this call, if I do a search for challenger, it's not even listed. So that's a bug. I'm going to fix that. Okay. So scrap that. You won't see this in the main video. There is no, this isn't in the documentation at this point. I'm going to fix that bug. Forget you saw this.